if, every, if for 60 years we've been doing something in a particular way and we're not seeing any change that we want to see, then it tells you maybe this is the time. Now, in 60 years, it's someone who is getting ready to retire. So if Sayelene is getting to 60, and we're thinking, oh, we're not even creepy, it will not mm -hmm. call it, and, and the retirement age don't reach, then probably it's the time for us to ask Sierra Leone and collectively think of a reborn of Sierra Leone. Mm. And we take ownership of Sierra Leone. So it's not about, we need to blame ourselves. It's not just about the politicians who have right. ruled us because they didn't just fly up from the sky. We put them there. Mm. So if we're having problems with people and you're going through the history and you're looking at either people who took power by themselves or people who have voted in or people who decided to, to, we have had them as rulers, but then they have ruled us. Um, so it's not about the blame, mm -hmm. but it's about seeing how we change this, how we take responsibility as a Leonians to say, this has to change. We need to do certain things and we need to do certain things, not the same things. Yes, subscribe. You always the watch we program them, but you not subscribe yet to the channel. All what you get for do, press this red subscribe button, and then you come over here to and press this bell. To the bell option, press this one with all. And don't don't. And not get for cost you anything. When you do this, na sign for show say you the support we for make we do more. Thank you for all your help we for share this program. Yeah, God bless you. All right, it all began in 1961 um, with the battle between Shaka Stevens and Sir Milton Magai. Um, 60 years, um, Sierra Leone has witnessed ravaging battles as a brother rose against a brother for over a decade. Throughout our storied history, the destiny of our nation has been shifted by battles of supremacy between Sierra Leone's two oldest political parties, the APC and the SLPP. Tonight, as we take stock of the last 60 years, um, we shall continue to look at the things and the path we've taken as a nation. So tonight, we shall do an audit into the last 60 years and chart a path that we should take to a transformed society. There are a few questions we would want to ask um, in tonight's conversation. Is there a reason for Sierra Leoneans to celebrate the 60th independence anniversary? Or what are the things we demand to be um, in the future of the Sierra Leone we want? So I have a star-studded panel that will be analyzing the path that we will be taking um, from now onwards. My name is Samuel Weisbangura and this is AYV on Sunday. Yeah, God bless you. Welcome back um, to those of you watching and listening. Um, the show is a YV on Sunday, and you can always shout us your views. Send them on the Africa Young Voices Media Empire Facebook page, or alternatively, you can phone in when we open um, the call line and announce the number later. But tonight, I have with me the Executive Secretary for the Sale We Want, for Moses Mokonte. Good evening, and welcome, Moses. Thank you. Good evening. I have a um, lecturer from the University of Sale Dr. Fatuta Ki. Good evening, Doc. Good evening, and thanks everyone. for being here. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. All right, I have uh, the country's Minister of Information and Communication, Mohamed Roman Sore. Good evening and welcome. Good evening. Good evening. Quite a pleasure being here. All right. Andrew Lavalier, Executive Director, Institute for Governance Reform. Good evening. Good Andrew. evening. Good evening, viewers and listeners. All right. Andrew, I'm going to start off with you from that end, wow. since you're the last. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to start off with you. 60 years on, where are we? Um... So, uh, so, where are we? Uh, we are in Sierra Leone. But the, the reality is, uh, so when you look back 60 years when the Union Jack was pulled down, um, which marked the end of colonial rule, mm -hmm. the morale was high um, that our brothers and sisters, they took over the reins of government. Um, there was a hope that life can be better for all of us. But what we did not do at that time 
is to take stock of what we did we inherit. What did we inherit at the level of the economics mm -hmm. of governance at the level of the politics of governance. So what was the political system that we inherited and what was the economic system. So there was this euphoria. And my father used to tell me then that everybody thought that life would be good for all of us. So we inherited the, the first past the post winner take all, mm -hmm. um, which we have been battling with. And uh, we, we, it, it's as, as if there was a fratricida war that that opened since we inherited that. And then we had a system. If you look at the, the structure of Sierra Leone, the economic structure of Sierra Leone, there is a tree-shape uh, road network moving from Freetown down to Waterloo and onto Maishaka, and it branches out to the north and the south and east. So it collects raw materials from the rest of the country. It funnels it down again to that tree three ship structure to the trunk down to Water Key and to England at the time. So that was the time the rule was that you don't own your diamonds, it belongs to the queen. Mm. You don't own um, your gold, your rutile, it be belongs to the queen. Mm. We've now mined diamonds for about 90 years. And what happened? Freetown did not change the rules. SLPP, APC, so the rule that benefited England it's the in elite inherited it, and there was no appetite to change it. Mm. So what we have seen, and because Freetown did not reflect on the system that we needed, so we've been fighting. It's just been win winner take, take all. So the only time that we've drifted away from the governance system was when we realized that all cannot work anymore. So we are, by 1990, we are in the kind of advanced stage of decomposition we are classed as the worst set of humans on the planet, and then the war started creeping in the country. So the war started as a political-based conflict against injustice and misrule. So at the end of the war with Tijan Kaba rule, we, we, before the end of the war, we just said, how can we solve this? That was the time we started thinking, how do we change our political system? Mm. We decided, so let's, let's have a PR system. With the PR system, we started, you know, talking to one another. And every day, Suelinians eulogize Tijan Kaba that it is only under his reign that, that, that we, we had peace. Because it was not winner take all. SLPP APC shared Freetown. SLPP APC shared Kenima. SLPP APC shared Bombali. It's not the same anymore. So there is, there is always a temptation. Let us put the searchlight on, on an Eskrumah. Let us put the searchlight on Madabio without looking at what is it that we have? Mm. Is it working for us? So to me, that's my reflection. And if, to, I, I, I think it's good for, to, for us to have a good reflection, largely on the way forward, instead of actually blaming which side. We've right. had 35 years of APC rule, 20 years of SLPP rule, and then five years of military rule. Mm. It doesn't matter. I think it's now time for us to see how. So, so, so as we move forward, um, Dr. Taki, um, according to Andrew, when we, 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 we wanted to be, I mean, free people, independent people, we, we did not devise a local model that can actually um, put us um, on a track that we had wanted to go. So we just copied because those who were there, they, they, they were also benefiting after um, those guys had left. But looking at where we are, are, are we actually, um, have we started taking a step to the path that will lead to the serial we want. Um, thank you, um, Samuel. I think um, having this conversation right now is, is that um, us acknowledging that we need to have a conversation around it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think for me, it's, it's a step for us to, to lay the tracks of where we want to go. Mm -hmm. um, yes, we, were, uh, we, we got independence um, 60 years ago, and um, but as, as Andrew has explained, um, we were not really independent because the things were not ours per mm. se. And, and in fact, I, I find it difficult to say um, post-colonial. Right. I, I say post-independence because I, I believe that um, we, we, we are still, you know, sort of colonized and we're always having this 
conversation mm. of comparing what it was like under the white man right. and when we're by ourselves. And um, I, I think <laughs> it starts with, with the decolonizing our minds, mm -hmm. you know, as to say this is owning what we have, mm. not owning what we have to say, well, the white man they don't uh, give you independence, so now we're the only safe now. But if everything else, we, we have to answer to them, and we cannot really have, we don't really have the autonomy to do certain things, um, then it, 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 it puts us now where we need to have a conversation and have a start having a rethink of what we want to do. The concept of neocolonialism. Of, of, no, a concept of owning mm. ourselves as Sierra Leone, owning Sierra mm. Leone, and taking responsibility um, as Sierra Leoneans. So when we find ourselves now, I'm just going back from what Andrea said, and, and I picked up something that you've said um, with the brother, Basil's mm -hmm. brother. Um, again, it brings us to the point where we need to rethink. If, every, if for 60 years we've been doing something in a particular way, and we're not seeing any change that we want to see, then it tells you maybe this is the time. Now, there is 60 years is someone who is getting re uh, ready to retire. So if Sahelian is getting to 60, and we're thinking, well, we're not even creepy to not mm. call it, and, and retirement age don't reach, then probably it's the time for us to, as Sierra Leoneans collectively, think of a reborn of Sierra Leone. Mm. And we take ownership of Sierra Leone. So it's not about, we need to blame ourselves. It's not just about the politicians who have right. ruled us, because they didn't just fly up from the sky. We put them there. So if we are having problems with people and you're going through the history and you're looking at either people who took power by themselves or people who have voted in or people who decided to, to we have had them as rulers, but then they have ruled us. Um, so it's not about the blame, mm -hmm. but it's about seeing how we change this, how we take responsibility as Sierra Leoneans to say, this has to change. We need to do certain things and we need to do certain things, not the same things. So not that the brother, but the brother right. business again, and the same two parties fighting each other again. Let us see some inclusivity. Let us see a mix where um, you, you what's, the, what, what, uh, what's the word, when you dilute something that if you have um, the testosterone is, right, that's there <laughs> from men, <laughs> yeah, and we have, we've had it for 60 years, mm. whether it's military rule, whether it's democratic, governance, mm -hmm. and we haven't seen whatever changes we're looking at, then I think it's about time we start to mix and dilute some of the things. Mm -hmm. But we, as, we have to be responsible. Um, when we find ourselves now, I think um, Sailun still is blessed, I believe that. Mm -hmm. And I think there are some positive things that Sailun still enjoys intermarriage, tribal marriage. I still, interreligious, we're still very, very much Mix and, and that is not something we need to leave. That's mm. not something we should change. But when it comes to a governance, where it comes to economic development, where it comes to development of our people mm -hmm. and, and us making decisions and us making people uh, answer, you know, to, for them to, to be able to answer to, to the populace, I think there has to be a, a change in how we are doing things. So where we find ourselves now mm -hmm. is where I think we're starting the line to say, okay, 60 years, they can't retire, now is the time for life to start. Mm. And we need to take responsibility so for they go out and backbite and looking at this person and say, oh, this one is from this tribe, this one is from this region, this one looks like this. No, it's about seeing how I can take that person as my brother or my sister and we work together, whether you're in the diaspora or not, because we see, in fact now we see so much problems now with people who are in the diaspora, people putting things out that if you read the, go back to the TRC report, these are the things, and people who went through the 90s here in Sierra Leone, you see clearly that we're finding ourselves in a place where this, these are some of the things that happen when we, which caused the civil war. Mm -hmm. So uh, we need to, to have a rethink, and we need to take responsibility. Right. Taking responsibility, Moses, I mean, taking responsibility for a nation that got its independence in 1961, and um, there is need now for a rebirth. I mean, this, this country needs, uh, needs to go back and, I mean, start afresh to a path that we should take for development. You, you are part of a project that, um, that seeks to, 
to awaken the consciousness of finding the soul of, of a Sierra Leone. What, what, what does this put on the table? Yes, thank you so much. Uh, it's very important that we have such con this, these conversations, and I want to say thank you to AYV for giving us this platform to discuss this all-important uh, topic. Sierra Leone at 60, uh, crafting, scripting the, the, fut the, the future of the Sierra Leone we want. Uh, a lot has been said, uh, the history is there. 60 years is a long walk, it's a long road. Mm. And anybody who has spent 60 years in existence, you would expect that person should have done a lot for himself or for others. Or herself. Or herself. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Retirement. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, uh, it, it's very, very crucial. I, I want to just briefly, for me, I capture the history of Sierra Leone and how we, we got into colonialism, how we, we got on, on the, um, the British rule in this way. Mm -hmm. I believe Captain Bold and Thompson came, well, our own people gave Sierra Leone to the white man, mm -hmm. I, I believe, based on history. Now, Captain Bold and Thompson, when you do constitutional law and when you go through history, came and paid um, King Nimbana something to give him the Koya and also all of here. And that was how they came and they settled. Our own people gave Mama Sierra Leone, and they accepted a dowry mm -hmm. given by Captain Bolden Thompson for this land. And yes, they inhabited it. And they came, they came with their own rule. They started mm -hmm. with the company. Then our people agitated. They started to change to Slatter Constitution, the Black Hole Constitution, up to the time when you look at even the constitutional development of Sierra Leone. How we even got on to the 1991 Constitution. So our people were always agitating for independence. They were always agitating to have their own rule, mm -hmm. even though the white man was there. But yes, Mama, though had been, the, the dowry had been paid for, mm -hmm. and the, the, we had this marriage between the white man and Mama Salon, Mama saw that the white man was cruel because Sierra Leone was now, was now the port for transatlantic slave trade. Mm -hmm. It was the port, it was the headquarter. That's what we are known for. Um, our own brothers, Mama's children were taken and carted away to, to work in, in farms overseas and, and things like that. So Mama said, no, this is cruelty. I cannot allow my kids to be like this. Mama said, you know what? We need to call this, this marriage off. We need to call this marriage, um, a vo we, need to, we need to just fold up. The divorce marriage. must take place. Yes, and Mama had to make that sacrifice. Hmm. Mama Sierra Leone, with his own elder sons, um, the, the late Sam Milton Magai of blessed memory, um, the late Carifa Smart, Albert Magai, were in Lancaster House to follow the proceedings mm -hmm. to see that the, the divorce really took place between us and the white man. Yes, they went and they succeeded to get this divorce. But what has happened up to date is the, is the fact that we, our elder brothers, those who have been leading us, those who have been in front of us, have not been able to make good of Mama's sacrifice. Because what Mama wanted to do for us was to give us a chance to determine what we want. Because we've been agitating for it. Mm -hmm. We have been crying that they're, they're taking us away. So now that we have the power, we can now have what it takes to change our own destiny. And that is what we've not done for 60 years. Like you said, Mama's children have been fighting themselves. Instead of coming together to focus on what's important, to focus on changing the economy, to focus on changing the lives of young people, to focus on changing the, 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 the peace, the atmosphere around. So this is where we are as we speak. And, and I believe wherever Mama would be, Mama would be shedding tears now. Because a woman at 60, we should be giving to Mama. We should not be causing Mama troubles. Every now and then, even, you know, you would hear bike men fighting. You'd be here. People are crying all over the place for 60 years. Successive government, the elder brothers who have been giving the opportunity to lead us, to ensure that they are able to um, run the country well and provide for all of us so we live well, they have not been able to do that. And, and I believe it's high time we have a moment for reflection. Because if it's 60, we've not had anything good to write home about. It means we have to come back and see what we can do. And this is where I believe we need to rethink and reimagine the kind of Sierra Leone we want. Mm -hmm. 
And the kind of Sierra Leone we want is a Sierra Leone where we live in peace, most importantly. And one of the things which we believe we have not learned from is, is the, the, the rebel incursion. What even caused the war? We still begin to see those things present. And we still begin to see tensions which really are not good. Mm. So we, 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 these are things we do not want to, you know, going forward. And these are things I believe Mama, Mama Sierra Leone, whom we should be buying rapa for, mm -hmm. we are not able to buy rapa for Mama, and we cannot even give Mama peace, mm. to, to say the least. And we have not been able to climb serious indices of human development. Now, when you check, when you check, when you Google Sierra Leone, when I was coming here, I Googled Sierra Leone, and you check what's, what are the things that will come up for Sierra Leone. The first thing they'll ask you, um, what is it known for, for crime? And even when, what, um, the, what is it famous for? On Google, it's for, it was a slave port for transatlantic um, slave trade. So, but then, how, what have we done as Mama's children to rewrite that narrative? Should we be known for better things now? What are we doing to ensure we make this country, um, Sierra Leone, the Sierra Leone we want? Mm -hmm. Independence means self-determination. And, and that's why I believe, in fact, it's saying 60 years of independence is a misnomer. Because um, how, how well have we been able to even determine what we do? How well have we been able to determine that this is the price we would have to put on petrol? Nobody should come and tell us what we should how we should um, regulate the, the, the sale of petrol. IMF still comes and they tell, they tell us what to do. Mm. We, 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 we also come to even how we even run sensors. We, we cannot even service those basic critical areas, you know, to ensure that we're able to get our own data as a people. Mm -hmm. You come to even food. I tell you, I always say food is a loud, it's a political statement. A nation like a father that cannot feed his home does not have the moral fiber to talk about fatherhood. Right. So these are things that are crucial. Up to date, we've not been able to feed ourselves. We still import trillions of dollars of our own basic food. Mm -hmm. Then we talk about independence. This should be a moment for reflection. And from the several we want, we want to ensure that we change these things. And for us, we believe it's not just for government. And government must ensure that they, they, they open their arms. Because another thing which I believe is disturbing us. We are dependent on politics. A lot of people, our institutions are not independent. Now the independence comes, it's for me, from the Sierra Leone, it's from two folds. First, how well have we been able to detach ourselves from the white man, determining what we should do as Africans or Sierra Leoneans? Secondly, how do we even run ourselves? The institutions we say are independent. Are they truly independent to run and to ensure that they make what is right. We'll, we'll come to the details. Let me, let me bring in um, the, the Minister of um, Information. Um, you, you've, I mean, this is, th this is what you have now. This is the boat you have to sail. I mean, with um, a long, the, the, um, a very rough water. Uh, wh wh where do you think, I mean, the destination should be at this point? Uh, well, uh, I remember... Um, one encounter at Radisson Blue last year. I think it was a launch of the digital ID. With Excellency President Julius Madabu um, noted, yes, we were in turbulence, but he also recognized his own personal credentials as a tried, tested, and experienced pilot and assured us he will land the flight safely, even in this turbulence. So that is it. So now to the key issues. Um, so I like to go to this traditional aphorism. Um, slavery lasted for years, mm. freedom lasts forever. Um, so when the Union Jack was lowered on April 27, 1961, before Andrew and I'm sure a, ho a whole lot of people <laughs> in the band were born. Yeah. So <laughs> long before you guys were born, right? Um, I had the privilege, if you like, <laughs> of listening to the first Prime Minister, um, Sir Milton Magai. Oh. Now, well, I've actually listened to him, the recorded. <laughs> 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 anyway, so, I mean, that speech mm -hmm. still resonates with me. It was a very instructive speech. It was short, but to the point. Mm. 
He raised some of the most critical and salient issues of his time, which applies even to this day. He noted the issues around divisiveness. Mm -hmm. Well, he could understand. I mean, he had division staring him right in the face. Um, the APC, who did not support um, a, um, independence at the time, who wanted elections before independence, mm -hmm. um, had made efforts to undermine the, 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 the independence celebrations everywhere. Um, as a result, um, the leader of the APC was in jail by then. Mm. But still, he was gracious enough. He sent him, I'm told by history, he sent him a card and, and a bottle of whiskey because it was Sierra Leone's Independence Day. Mm. He also deserved to enjoy part of it. But more importantly, you have a situation where he highlighted the key issues of lawlessness, which still threatens the body policy of our country. Right. Right. And you could understand, like I said, the context in which he mentioned lawlessness. He was being confronted with lawlessness from the one. That was it, right? He also raised the issues of um, responsib responsible citizenship. I mean, this is not uncautioned that independence did not mean a resolution of all the myriad problems facing the new nation. He cautioned against that. It was going to require a lot of hard work a lot of diligence, a lot of shoulders to the wheel, and um, um, one mind, one purpose. He did say that. Of course, he, 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 he indicated and emphasized issues around national cohesion. Like many speakers before me have noted, there are a lot more things that unite us as Sierra Leoneans. There are a lot more things we should celebrate than those which, for personal reasons, threaten to tear us asunder, right? our religious tolerance, like you mentioned, mm -hmm. and all the other things. So this was the context we had independence, right? 60 years on, is there anything to celebrate? Yes, there are many things to celebrate. Mm. We have had a lot of missed opportunities as a country. Um, let us not forget, um, the first missionary society was mounted from here to go to Nigeria and support them in establishing their nation. So Sierra Leone literally um, had the training of trainers team here, went to Ghana, Nigeria, and most of the other West African countries. So we're a very repeated nation, you know. Even, but we still ended up getting independence after the people who prepared had got independence. Like you mentioned, <laughs> who we are still busy becoming protectorate versus colony. Mm -hmm. And today we have ethno-regional and other divisions which we, as a government, clearly recognize. If you have read the New Direction Manifesto and you have followed President Bill very keenly, he has never missed an opportunity to know that the country is divided and he was making every effort to stitch it together, right? Again, so yes, we were a very repeated nation at independence for mm -hmm. our quality of teaching and learning, even for our quality of debate, mm -hmm. our quality of enlightenment. Sadly enough, our debates have gone to the gutter. Even people seeking to lead us cannot debate on a very elevated platform. You know, it's always rushing to hide under the banner of ethno-regional sentiments, right? This country has to return to those winning ways. We all had enlightened and elevated debates around everything that affected us as a nation, even West Africa, right? So we are faced with a situation where the reasons we are expected around the world for education, we are fast losing out on that. Right? We are fast losing out on that. Our quality of teaching and learning remains at an all-time low. Hmm. Yes, I mean, this is fact. You now come by university graduates who will even struggle to write straight love letters. This is a serious thing. For a country that was once globally repeated, repeated for its quality of teaching and learning hmm. to where we are now, that is a sad case. I mean, why I said, oh, it's not doom and gloom, His Excellency President Bill has seen that in the campaign, and even after that, he did say, when you want to destroy a country, you don't need fighter jets. You only need to comprehensively destroy its educational system, which, was, which has been done over the years. So we are in rebuilding mode. That has been activated. That is why, under his leadership, he has allocated 22% of the national budget to rebuild the educational system brick by brick and layer by layer. For that reason, we currently have 2.5 million kids in school, right? 
we are paying all public examination fees just so that we could begin to rebuild. We are not there yet, and it's going to take time for us to get there. But they say a journey of a thousand miles starts with a step, mm. right? So that is one area we are clawing back. It's a shame that when we have ceded leadership and we are now trying to claw back. But it is what it is. So when you talk about issues of the media, in this country, early days, Sierra Leone in the 1930s, we, first, we had the first television here, the first radio signals and what have you. We again had a great reputation for our quality of journalism. Then came, you know, where we are. We atrophy <laughs> over the years, we slum, right? And we had this big Damaku sword hanging over the heads of media practitioners, the criminal libel law, mm. right? Again, as a sign of commitment to the renewal and the rebirth of Sierra Leone, so that those who struggle for those for our independence are not seen to have done that in vain. His Excellency President Bill's government has repealed the criminal libel law so that people can practice, the media can be unshackled and people can practice their trade without let and hindrance. Again, this was a from 1965, right? Mm. No government has done it before then. So why am I saying this? We realize there are challenges, but it's going to take men, real brave men, real courageous men, audacious men to take these challenges and you know, move this country to the next level. And right. women. <laughs> yes, men and women. So the other one, the last thing I want to say before I seed, mm -hmm. yeah, um, has to do with Andrew made a very pertinent um, suggestion. Um, we inherited virtually hook, line, and sinker, everything from colonial rule, including um, their first past the post electoral system. I mean, this has been at the very heart of our division in our politics, right? I mean, first past the post, winner takes all. It's been responsible for the shallow roots of our democracy. It's been responsible for the lot of the several big greens that has almost threatened to see her, to quote Mr. Moore Conte, Mama Apart. Mm -hmm. Right? So, um, we have been looking at this architecture and think that the best definition of stupidity is when you try the same model all the time, always, and you get the same result. So that means it's time for a change. Uh, His Excellency at the town hall meeting recently um, made a suggestion that we could start talking about a return to proportional representation. You know what? Women have been clamoring for 30%. You are never going to have 30% under, um, under a con constituency-based electoral system. You are never going to have that. It's still, it, it will continue to be deviled by crisis, by strife, by bickering, sometimes bloodletting. Right? And a whole lot of the other issues that come with it. We believe 60 years on, it's high time. We brought our women to the fold. We brought our women to the fore. And we brought our more women to leadership. We believe that um, a return to proportional representation mm. will be the best deal for this country going forward. Andrew, um, Moses mentioned the concept of independence, meaning, I mean, self determination. The minister has highlighted. Um, couple of um, positive gains um, that Sierra Leone made, um, well, should I say the past glory of Sierra Leone, um, or past glory of a crying nation. <laughs> but let me, uh, with the concept of neo-colonialism becoming so bold, um, Dr. Taki mentioned that, um, I mean, being independent when you, you cannot control or be in charge of your economy and things like that, the question I want to ask you is, how then do we patch our path to, to lay the tracks for a sustained, developed, I mean, Sierra Leone? Thank you very much. You know, I started with two questions, mm -hmm. and I, I'm happy that the panel went around to comment on those two questions as well. So the first question is, how can we get along? Right. Because if we cannot get along, we will never change anything. It will be one party in power today, another party trying to pull that party down, another party gets back to power, and then another party trying to get that down. So there will be no hope, no future for us. So the first and foremost is how do we resolve that? I'm happy that the minister mentioned that there is some thinking within government. And I think at this 60th anniversary, I think it's, it's high time we, we have a sober reflection. Not sober reflection on you know, who gets what. But how can we move forward? So 
and, and the, the second question was on the economy. When the queen said, you don't own anything on your ground. It's mine. The landowners in Samalen, they own nothing. The plantation is sock fins. I come from Moyamba, I own nothing. The rutile on my floor, on my ground, is rutile. Kono has mined diamonds for 90 years. The diamond does not belong to them. So we, in this garden of Eden of ours, mm. <laughs> we were designed and destined to suffer. So, 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 so that's the conversation that we really need to have. How can we have a country where the voice of the US ambassador and the British High Commissioner is more than one million Sierra Leoneans put together? And back to Fatou's comments about neocolonialism. Mm -hmm. So that's really it. And again, but let's even forget about the big superstructures. Let's come to day-to-day -day Sierra Leonean. Why is it that it is difficult for Sierra Leonean businesses to prosper? ASLPP, APC. Why is it that if you look on Siaka Stevens Street, if you look on Wilkinson Road, how many Sierra Leonean businesses are you actually seeing thriving? How can we change our destiny? And it goes back to really how we started. And we, we, we've, we, we, we're talking about this in circles. But to me, it's always good for us to look at the institutional capacity at the time we started. A number of people normally just put it simplistically. We are we ready for independence? And we actually spoke, we always talk about the euphoria at mm -hmm. the time of independence. But, you know, state, managing state architecture, um, uh, Minister Swari can correct me, is complex. I have seen people um, saying, you know, you see that parliamentarian day, with the pull out, put farmer. So we put people who cannot manage state architecture. So I think, I never th thought we understood the enormity of what we are going to handle. There was a thinking that the delivery of services, to, for you to get water in your tap, for you to get running schools, we thought those were easy. They are not. They are very complex. That's why in advanced democracies, it's the best and the brightest that's going to governance. You have to come from certain schools for you to say, I'm going to lead you. So we have reduced governance to mediocrity. It's about who is the best dog. That person is going to get this position. Mm -hmm. You know, who is the best spin doctor, the best liar? Even if you have no track record, you are going to be in that position. So to me, first and foremost, we can talk about the economy later, but let's stop fighting. If there is anything that we can resolve this 60th anniversary, is to say, low left for fat. There are people in the diaspora. You know why? And I understand their anger. Every day they are frustrated. They believe that you know, there is a regime that is not ours. I need to kick them out so that my, my regime comes to power. We will be going in a vicious cycle. So it behoves people in the ruling government and the opposition to say, you know, let's wait a minute. Our diversity is our strength. Fullers can always be fullers. Mendes will be Mendes. They are designed that way. But you have clever fullers and stupid fullers. Clever Mendes and stupid Mendes. Let us see who can best do what. So, and again, from the point of view of governance, if you, we cannot move ahead with development if we don't have economic, inclusive economic institutions and inclusive political institutions. Mm. So by inclusive political institutions, we mean institutions that can accommodate, so we are the best argument wins. So if Minister Stowari is talking about uh, PR system or cyber crime, cyber bill, you come with your argument on anti. Not. So if you don't do that, do scaremongery rumors, you no, know, they want them and they're against we, Tim Lee, then they're against we, it will not work. And again, when you talk about inclusive economic system, if when you want to procure a vehicle, you said this is the bid that will procure the best vehicle for Sierra Leone, not how you cook up procurement documents so that they don't become inclusive. How can we have the best kid, if that kid is from Kabbalah, but that kid is a scientist, how can we have that kid getting scholarship? Not SLPP kids or APC kids. So I think, but the first we have to do is to stop fighting. From, from I, I, my Andrew, point I'm, of view. I'm tempted, forgive me. I mean, earlier you mentioned, I mean, what's the queen 
said that this is your country, but what, I mean, what's on the table is mine. What's on the table is mine. Let's go back. Go to Kono, for example, where perhaps you'd want to say it's the headquarters of this Garden of Eden. I mean, when it comes to our extractive, um, very underdeveloped. People are suffering. So is it not the same thing? Because you go, you mind, the people continue to live in perpetual and monumental poverty. Is it not the same thing? 60 years ago, it's the same thing it's the ongoing. Same. It's the, it's so, the same. So, so how then do we, do, do we, um, do we emancipate those people? So from, from the from the from the situation. So 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 to me, I think is the two solutions. Mm. So the first solution, as I said, let's stop fighting. Mm. And the second solution, let's claim what is ours. How do we stop fighting? I when mean, they the, are the, the, the stop stopping fighting, mm -hmm. it means uh, trying to get a model where every Sierra Leonean wins. Mm. So, for example, we've we've been talking about the proportional representation right. system. So it's a, it's a system where candidate A, B, and C contest election. Mm -hmm. Candidate A happens to get 50% of the vote. Candidate B, 30%. Candidate C, 20%. Mm -hmm. Candidate A be automatically becomes a leader. But it doesn't mean candidate B and C have lost. They are still going to be part of it. So even at a local level, so the basic unit of governance in Sierra Leone is a ward. And guess what? There are 10 members of every ward. Mm -hmm. So right now we have a situation where the councillor just needs to win the ward. So when you win the ward, your campaign committee becomes a ward committee. Mm. So, they are, so the others are out. And in, in an ethnically divided society, you cannot govern that way. So imagine if you have a system uh, where you can say we are going to run a proportional representation mm -hmm. system. Do you know what? We'll have APC people coming as MPs in Kenima and as local councillors in Kenima, because if APC happens to get 20% of Kenima, you have them in the Kenima government. The same can be replicated in Makeni. We will never have had a situation where SLP people will have thrown MPs in parliament because they got about 35% of, of Freetown. They will have got their own share. We will have never will have got and answer lands in that situation because APC will have legitimately had two seats in Kailo. So we have to stop fighting and, and build bridges of accommodation. Mm. Then we come to the next point, which is how can we claim what we ours? What is ours? Mm -hmm. If we don't stop fighting, we can't claim it. Right. Right now, it's China that is coming in control. It used it was UK at the time, then the US, now it's China. Mm -hmm. So we for now, how do we have the economy? So let me just finish this. Go ahead. The political economy is such that people in the driving seat of policy, they face certain pressures that we don't understand. Because what the winner take all dictate is that if I leave power, there is nothing for me anymore. So you, you, you adopt what you call a zero-sum approach to power. Because after that, it's nothing. Mm. So what you have to assure yourself is after you and you. So, so that's, that's, that's the battle. We have to ensure that we, we, we build those bridges. We, we simmer down the, uh, the, what? The, we simmer down the tension mm -hmm. and, then, and then become brothers and sisters again. Right. Dr. Taki, <laughs> you spoke about um, we should start laying the tracks. But, but I want to ask you this question. In, in, in an era where there is lack of national development, I mean, agenda, development agenda, for example. The APC will come to power with its own plans, with its own agenda. The SLPP comes to power with its own plans, with its own agenda. When the APC goes out, that, ag I mean, that agenda dies. A new agenda is born when the SLPP is in. When the SLPP goes out, a new agenda. So we, the, the development, there is, no, there is no path, no national agenda leading us to where we want to go. Then how do we lay those tracks? <laughs> we are... We, we seem to be in an ever-evolving <laughs> door. Mm. Oh, with a go-round. In right. fact, first, one of the first things mm -hmm. is that um, all these things we're talking about now, I think, see, one basic thing is we change this language for make people understand and better. Because mm -hmm. when they they talk so, and mm -hmm. what Andrew is saying, and what uh, Radu is saying, and what Thomas is saying, and what you're saying, mm -hmm. um, I think, see... The people who are in governance, uh, so-called political leaders, they understand. Right. But the people when I do the vote they in, not understand the issues they are. Mm. Will they speak all they speak? 
So we first of all get for get to do for we for stop fighting is that people need to understand what in they at stake. Mm -hmm. Why we should not fight. Why person who can tell me say boy and I will shoo go mm -hmm. de so until they they want to bug we or oh, yanda na 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 you cause na emi dey or na you na you eh continue man na emi dey under but they want to pull and dey that that person needs to understand. Hmm. Yeah, okay, we not be content. Man, even if you come today, but the work we they do, not mm -hmm. for we only they do, huh? Not for this tribe or not for that tribe. So we need for go beyond. I remember one of the first things I said huh, after the elections, um, 2018. Mm -hmm. I remember coming here, um, the internet, and I said, yeah. elections. We don't done elections. So political partyism should be done with party. Politics. Right. We're looking at national politics. So the question you asked um, is that we find ourselves at 60, we still a creep mm. because there is no continuity. If one person comes, we're, we're always reinventing. So one person comes, we have this agenda. When the next person comes, push and push. Okay, mm. you know I mean? even, even in offices. Right. You go to offices, people stay in offices. If someone is at the head there, they have their agenda, they're doing work, people see it's fantastic. Somebody else comes to that office. They change the whole agenda. Whether they see that that thing was working or not, they move it and start something else. And the moment you start something else, you will not have that uh, fortitude to be able to move because you therefore begin creep back, mm -hmm. people therefore understand, and then they have to implement. So these are some of these, and what we say, Putting the path, laying the path, laying the, the is um, where I start. I talked about I'm going to be mixing it throughout right. this career. Would I not understand right. Creole? Has to find a way to right. understand Creole again. You know, um, you know, we are looking at the radical. <laughs> sorry, no, yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't go out. I mean, because you know, we we, we go out of a way to understand English and mm -hmm. communicate with people and. Try to dance to their tune. So sometimes you need to own yourself and be proud of what you are. And that's part of the and, and in fact, say, you know, all the time we're involving copying other people. If not copy Nigeria or copy Ghana and copy, we're always copying. Mm. You know. So is is and I see now is uh, this is the the era now eh, that mm. we're reclaiming. Say, you know, they wear the country close now. They wear that right. We're proudly until we get to the point where we say we're able to talk real without making it sound pigeon. Mm. You know, so the, this is part of that radical change. And we're looking at 60, mm -hmm. even a 60 year old mentally retarded person. Um, we're not fully developed to the capacity we're supposed to um, fully develop. Then it's, 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 it's on all of us to give that individual support for make it calm, for get in full potential. Mm -hmm. And this is where we are now. And this is why I say at 60, we draw the line now and start for make change. Mm. And you mentioned the proportional representation. And we saw that it worked during Tijankaba's time. Unfortunately, it's after Tijankaba had left. And even when he had passed, that now we see him as the greatest leader in Sierra Leone. Right. Because at the time, it, it wasn't appreciated. Mm. But now people, they see what had happened, mm. see that proportional representation. How could we, in fact, go back? In fact, during this time, obviously, I am... And I, I, I noticed that I have to keep reminding you people is not brother, brother, <laughs> man, man. You know, it has to come natural to us at this time. We cannot be thinking. Nobody has to be left behind. Mm. It's no longer man, not a woman. So don't call me chairman. Me call me not a man. Chairwoman. So chairperson. Okay. So we, we, we make provision <laughs> for man for and both. woman. <laughs> Yes, he make provision for man and woman. So right. nobody feel is, is in a certain position and right. starts to feel uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Because even in the constitution, the mm. words that, sorry, the words on the constitution, not make provision for she. And we believe he is generic. We in, no longer he is generic. Right. So people, have, like I say, people can only feel or take responsibility mm -hmm. and take ownership when they feel that they're involved when they feel that they're part of it. So this, all this grammar, what would they talk to, right? In moving Salon forward, we have to move beyond when we have a government in position. Mm -hmm. The government has to understand that they're working for the people of Sierra Leone, not 
the people of that register. In fact, I can go and vote for a political party. I'm not a member of the, I'm not a member of any political party, but I vote. I vote. So you cannot say, well, you're not a member, or you really, you're not a, you're not a one of you. You cannot know that I go vote for in the mm -hmm. first place. You cannot assume by my name or by what I look like, or I think I come out and say when another person I go vote for. No. So everybody has to be included. So when a government comes in position, they need to understand, and people need to see that they're inclusive. They need to see that the work when they do now for the country, not to force for the people who have been voting me or the people who have been voting me and them force before Th everybody else. Things like that have been said. How then do we get the, the, I mean, our, the politicians? Our policies, because, mm, listen, our well, policies, mm -hmm. yeah, and this is where we find ourselves. Now, and this, you know, in this age of social media, your social media, they are about all man right now. Because we're, we're, we're not used to this sort of thing. People will talk about certain things and talk with, with, within closed doors. Mm. But now social media gives every man a journalist, all man a photographer. It gives people a platform. So people just talk and air themselves. People just talk. So you need to be in a position where you need to, to be doing things. But many people and see, say, mm, what in this person they do? Is the right thing is for the country, mm -hmm. not for any own gain, or not for the people them where they think they vote same in. And I think that's a gross mistake that people make. Because you assume that people in a certain area vote for you. Until sometimes you just look you need to go back and go look at the voting counts. May you see really if now they would the only way things they vote for you vote for you. You know? So we need to move beyond we're talking this is we're talking about the governance now, we're talking mm -hmm. about the politics around yeah. it. That people need to move beyond people need to be seen that they're representing a country and not their political party once they're in governance. Where they come to election time, will they begin go that side? Dr. Taki. Yeah? I, I mean, I, I hold the view that no political party in Sierra Leone will win a national election with just the support of its tribal kingsmen. Definitely. And, but, and that has been um, established in almost every election we've, I mean, we've had. But going by um, the outcomes of those elections, when the APC comes to power, Oh, these guys will definitely sabotage my plans and they will not serve in the interest of our political ideology. We belong to different political parties. And they, 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 they did not, I mean, expend, they did not take from their pockets to, to support the campaigns and, and things like that. So even when we give appointments, it's based on compliments and not competence. How then do we, do we uh, um, rearrange, I mean, our governance system, our governance style that Dr. Taki... Is, is competent, she is not a member of the SLPP, but she has been appointed by the SLPP to serve in a capacity that can better Sierra Leone. And when the APC comes, oh, you know, if you work on the SLPP, you go. <laughs> so how then do we change no, that I call it I call it the curse to serve. Hmm. So you have well-meaning Sierra Leoneans who are professionals, right. who are passionate about the country. And the moment they take appointment, they don't have the, oh, now you dandy. Right. So when everyone comes, they take the brief boom, they sweep on all mm -hmm. for go. That needs to stop. But also, we as a people, we get the responsibility for politicians to know and understand. And now we, they put them in certain places. Right. So they need to understand about what, it, what it, um, 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 I'm coming to. When we're talking about putting the path, it's now where we stand ourselves. It's fortunately or unfortunately, the SLPP is now in government mm -hmm. under the leadership of uh, His Excellency uh, uh, Julius Madabio. Um, and we're looking at how to move Sierra Leone forward from all the problems. Mm -hmm. So one, you as a leader, you have to meet Magnum News. You as a leader, you say you were there before, now like uh, banana tick, now you then carry all the dirty go put under. But now you the flourish, you are the leader, yeah? Now you the, ba the banana, all end of in, and then go pack under. But now they define banana, they come home. So you have to stretch your hands out. You need to stretch your hands. But at the same time, we, you know, there are certain laws and things that we have, and we waste so much time. For me, I still don't understand why that constitutional review process, with all those strong recommendations that we had, have mm -hmm. still not been passed. Because we've wasted time, it's three years. When some of these things, we should not be talking about them. I think that should have been a priority for saying, mm, let's look at these. Because it been bets them. Mm. You know, it's always, so what APC are complaining about are things that they did. And SIPP are doing the same. It's when it turns again, it's going to be the same. Mm. But we cannot be having 
people bickering all the time. And the, 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 what the two elephants effects are the grass, now in the sofa. So it's about time the grass now dis decides to say, no, we don't want it this way. But then when are the elephants? They need to walk and then we see, say, is that the best um, interest of the country? And this thing that you're saying, Mama Salon, if I, I'm, I'm, I have, uh, you think, hmm. that one of the same mama, this mama, you don't really care <laughs> for the women. You don't. So if not for intimidation and, and violence <laughs> and cost and waiting and call, you call mama, mama, we, mama, me no ebulo, you cost mama. But when papa day, you sometimes, who's like the papa sit down, you know, so maybe we'll begin to say papa salon. Hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. Because when you say Mama Salona, they all the nonsense, they come, all the, the problem, they come all. So there's no respect, there's no rule of law, right. there's, no, there's no consideration for other people. And we say Mama, and then you don't have respect for Mama. So why are we saying Mama? Mm -hmm. Mama Salona, they cry. Mama Salona will continue for cry, but then we need to make the step for Mama Salona cry. So maybe we'll start saying Papa. Right. So, you, so, so at least Dr. Taki don't get what I'm saying. same as they say, you, 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 you the, same, the same with the Allah, Mama Africa, we Allah. No, hold on, no. We say, no, because we need to change the narrative. Mm. We need to change it. And sometimes you have to be radical to do some things. Right. When I look at, you know, politicians, uh, people in leadership, all of us, we travel. We go to other countries. We see what happens in other countries. Yeah? But yet we come back. And we cannot make those changes. Mm. We cannot even try to make the changes. We'll say, I go and I go Guinea. Now, so up in there, why don't we try to implement it here? Before that, we're ready to go. But we don't want to make a change. Why is it, why, 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 why is it that way? Allah, Mama, Africa, Mama Salon, and then Mama Mikos, no more, okay? Mm -hmm. We'll not get that because. <laughs> so why is the respect for Mama Salon? You know what I mean? Right. So for me, it's a fast. Right. You know? So let us take that ownership. Let us when it comes to political party when the time comes for campaign when the time the, your your work should speak for itself not, you know they even yagba you know it's wet mm. because if everybody has seen that it's inclusive everybody has seen that you're working for the country everybody has seen that there's no disproportionate in terms of the salary how you see some man they dress here they go so how you see the basic amenities that need to be done if people can get water and then get light and we a good health system where I don't need to go to Ghana or to India. You don't need to campaign to that person. You don't need to. And this is what happens in other countries. Right. So if we travel to other countries, why is it that we don't come back and make some effort? And this is where I say radical change. If you're talking about inclusivity, is radical. Changing some of our laws is radical. Being, um, stretching your hand out and say, okay, I know so you know to me, Paddy, but outside this country concern, more move, more move forward. Mm -hmm. It's radical. And this is what needs to be done. So right. for me, that's, 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 um, that's, that's what I'm thinking. So, oh. so no more particular. We get people who have a commitment to Sierra Leone. Mm. We should say get a commitment to Sierra Leone, not to party force. I always, even before I always said, you, you know, woman force, right? I'm um, Sierra Leonean. They have, so my commitment is Sierra Leone, okay. not my commitment to a political party I'm registered to, okay. or to a person. Um, Moses, um, just so uh, I mean, I, I mean, interestingly, um, we have um, almost a thousand active participants on the forum right now, <laughs> super active, <laughs> and, uh, and we'll have, we'll, they would have to forgive us because we can only take as few messages as possible because of time. But There's Moses. One last thing. One last uh -huh. thing. So when we talk about diaspora, and mm -hmm. I'm talking about other countries mm -hmm. where we travel to other countries, when we go to other countries, they have laws. We fall in line. Absolutely. We fall in line. Mm -hmm. if, you, if there's a notice there, even if you cannot read, mm -hmm. it says, no through. Yeah. You go through and see what happens. <laughs> but in Salem, we go and people live in some of these countries and they come back. You don't know what that be. So everything that the law says, we turn it upside down mm -hmm. because we're in Sierra Leone. Because of personality. Because of personality, or maybe because of the name Freetown, I don't know. <laughs> maybe, again, that's another thing that needs to change. Right. So it's a, that's why I said decolonize our minds. Mm -hmm. We need to change the narrative. We need to change the trajectory. Mm -hmm. And in order to do it, the government now in power need to show, you need to show the strong example that these are things that should be done and things that things should, should not be done. So you cannot be saying one thing and people see you doing something else. Mm -hmm. So people need to call you. 
to task. Mm -hmm. So okay. it's not about being there. So, so this is what I mean by radical change. And it, it goes to His Excellency. Huh? He needs to take the step, the bold step. If you see somebody going wrong, if you're not Kenny, defend from Kenny King. If not, pull and be. Mm. Some people are not, you're not born to be there. Somebody else goes needs to go there. Right. So I, I think that's, I, I, that's important. As you say that, I'm, I'm only thinking if, um, I mean, a man or a woman at 60, um, for, for, for a young man or a young woman, they are sh I mean, it, it gives hope for a job. But they should, I mean, they should be living. They should be going into the twilight whilst the young guys will be coming into the limelight. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it should be relaxing so, now. So, but, 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 that, but, but the, I mean, a man at 60, Sierra Leone, has not started. I mean, <laughs> so, so, so where does that put hope for young people? It's, it's, it's very crucial. Um, I, I must also, before I get to that, um, address a, a very important issue mm -hmm. Mr. Lavalli mentioned. Right. Um, the, the infighting he spoke about. Mm -hmm. uh, that's crucial. You know, nothing, nothing is ever done in chaos. Nothing mm. is ever done in chaos. And this is why we need to make an investment in our peace. Every day, we must be banking mm -hmm. just to ensure that we have sustainable peace. Because without peace, we cannot survive as a nation. So that takes me to the point of leadership. Um, leadership is crucial in all of this. Uh, we, we, the tension first. Why do we have so much? The first question you ask is, why so much tensions? Mm. When elections are over, why is the people become so embittered? Now, when, when, uh, when elections you are done and dusted, you lose everything. That's just one. But then let's come down again to what happens. Mm -hmm. But maybe that's the big ones, those who probably have more cash mm -hmm. and what have you. But then there are people who lose their jobs in offices. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because of a change of government. Yeah, that, that, that's it, yes. Well, it also affects those yes. other areas. And, and for me, this is where the tension is, is. Because if somebody is qualified, like we said, we go for the best and brightest, the person can perform, and he, can, he, he was appraised, he was performing well. Mm -hmm. the only, the, the, his only blight is his not um, stark allegiance to a party, not even to the nation. Mm -hmm. So even if he did well in that office, it will never be counted for him or her. What will be counted would be, what will be measured would be his allegiance to a political party. Mm -hmm. So this is where I say, uh, when we, even people who had sec security of tenure mm -hmm. in the last government, mm -hmm. when this government came, they removed them. The sweep. So these are things that keep on bringing tensions. We, we, have, to be ensured, we have to ensure that institutions are, independ are independent. We should not be shortchanging the things um, that, sh that the, the text has, has properly stated. Mm -hmm. So that's very crucial. And for the youth, and for the youth, and we all know in Sierra Leone we are all in, um, interrelated. When somebody prospers, it means that person will have to help a lot of other people. Right. Okay? Um, a lot of the young people are also disenchanted. There are young people who have very good degrees, who have come out, I, we know a, a lot of them, mm -hmm. who can perform, but they cannot be placed because maybe they're not sure of where their allegiance lie. These are things which are affecting the young people of this nation. Now, even when it comes to um, establishing things that have to do with developing their capacity, it is just what we see is a very good um, politicking that is being done. You see people are, the last time we went on Independence Day, mm -hmm. we went to Black Street, we went to speak with these youths down there. And they will tell us, they don't build for we um, car wash. But what we, you, flee, yeah, you know, they say, not only the capacity we, some of you are electrician, they. some of you are for fixed motor car. When they, the motor car is poor, they go to Lebanese, for let them go fix the motor car. Imagine we have, we, we, the government, for me, it, this should be no time for excuses. We have to take responsibility. And that's why in the Sierra we want, we don't believe we should be even shifting responsibility. For us, in the Sierra we want, we believe we have to take responsibility. And that is why we're also embarking on certain things to change the paradigm. Mm -hmm. So, for the youth, I believe government must ensure that its plans to develop the capacity of youth should not just be um, a, a, a smoke screen. And, and, and I believe what they should truly do is to see that policies 
which I get towards improving the lives of youth, are not just done for the sake of, um, yes, we have just done something, and, and then when election time comes, you just give them money and, and that kind of a thing. We need, true, we need vocational um, um, skills training centers. Now for automobile um, mechanic, we need more mechanic shops. That's why we have the TVET. How best have we um, improved our TVET uh, facility in, in Sierra Leone to ensure that the, the huge chunk of our youthful population could also go and harness relevant skills? Now, we have to also remove this myth. It is not about those who go to work in offices who have suit, who really are, are be, who become successful in life. Mm -hmm. Okay? And, and this is where, again, we need to redesign and rethink our educational system. Because every year, throngs of young people graduate with papers. They are certificated, but they will get without education. Because being certificated <laughs> does not mean you're educated. Right. You know. So, because education is about skills acquisition. They come, they do not have proper communication skills. So then, what were they doing in university for the, in, in the first place? You know, they do, not, they do not even have IT skills. So even open a word to do even basic Microsoft, yeah. they cannot use those things. Mm -hmm. The question we ask is, what is our government doing? Because if these problems are happening, and these problems ha have been here for quite a very long time, and to me, I believe politics has been an anathema to Sierra Leone. Mm. We've not been probably paying politics maybe the right way. Even politics is now even dragged to even the educational infrastructure of the country. So even how those who, probably are, those who probably have the experience to fix the curriculum in those universities, when power changes hands, the educational institutions also suffer. Should that be the way we want to move, let's say, 50 years' time from now, when mama would be, when uh, mama when or papa, papa would be, papa would be 120. <laughs> these are crucial issues. Right. You know, um, today we, we, we go around, we see a lot of people, a lot of us who are graduates, um, Fabi College just turned out. Thousands. Mm -hmm. Jala, thousands. IPAM, thousands. But people are getting paper. How are they contributing to the development of the nation? These are critical questions we should be asking. If not, we need to redesign and rethink um, formal, in fact, even formal education. So more, more has to be spent. For me, the money we would even probably put together for, if ever there is a plan for celebration, should be invested in maybe building a particular um, um, uh, workshop for young people who are out there. Let them get the skills. They should, be, they should see government making these efforts because I believe it would help a lot. And we all know that when, when we have unrest, the people who have the energy to cause mayhem mm -hmm. are the young people. Right. So in all of this, government must ensure that we are able to engage the minds of young people because the idle mind is the devil's workshop. When the youth is idle, he will be a tool to the politician. So we must ensure that in the conversation mm -hmm. for the sale in, in, in in scripting the, f new, the future of the new Sierra Leone we want, we should ensure we fix our educational systems to ensure that they are skills-based, not just paper-based. Also, we <laughs> <laughs> I was told, I was told what, what Dr. Taki and others do at the university, I mean, I was told you only prepare us to pass exams. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we glorify the road to yeah. of learning, and which is very <laughs> quickly. Yes. Before, before, be, so I don't, I don't lose it. Yeah. Um, As my over yes, 60, I'm no, no, just, just a quick one mm -hmm. before I forget. Well, she's, she's alone on the panel. Over, <laughs> over 60, and, I, and I, I'll, take, I'll take it. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> over six, for 60 years, mm -hmm. what have we, what can any of the governments that have come in 60 years lay their finger on and say, this is what had started 71? And this is where we have succeeded, and we're not get no problem with them. Um, this one works. What? Not health, not agriculture, not economy, freedom of speech, not not youth. Well, as you, I suppose yes, Gado can say freedom of speech. <laughs> yes. But then, what 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 is it translating to? Mm. So that's well, something time, maybe. Yeah. A, <laughs> so that's something maybe a government can look at. If we're focusing on health, mm -hmm. let's focus on health. Let us have a hospital that people can afford to go to, that have the machines and everything. Let's, let's this is why I say radical. When you look at other countries <laughs> where a, a political, where a president tells you, 
no minister or no MP would leave this country if you are sick you, are, you should go to the hospital here mm -hmm. if you're in government school you are going doing education your child to go to government school when those radical we have to be honest with ourselves when those radical decisions are made and we see a very transparent government with people doing what they're saying and what they're pushing on and i think it's good but for now we don't have anything that will say this now don't put on pan in better they pan. not mining not agriculture not health not education none right so it's we, we have to <laughs> now, now you have the power to actually script the serial we want yeah. <laughs> I yes. mean, you're in power now so you have to script that i mean with us together with the people well, of Sierra Leone. Yes. So, so what's the plan it's a tough place to be mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but it's the right place to be also mm. at 60. Um, if you had tried an untried and untested hand at 60, it would have been a monumental disaster for our country. Mm -hmm. But Sarah Lewis in a safe pair of hands with President Bill. Uh, we took over leadership in 2018 at mm -hmm. a time when the Ministry of Education did not have, has not had a curriculum unit for over 10 years. That is scandalous. You don't even want to say it in public. It's a national embarrassment. Mm -hmm. But that is the reality of the situation. Right? So, again, we take this responsibility very seriously. We have started rebuilding that. Mm -hmm. We now have a curriculum unit that is developing curriculum, reviewing it over time to make our education fit for purpose. Just to reassure you, we recognize these gaps, and they are very serious gaps. In mining, for example, I mean, like other speakers before me have said, Sierra Leone started mining diamonds in the 1930s. So this date and let me do this one. In the interest of full and frank disclosure, I've worked for virtually all existing mining companies. You know, so I clearly understand. Mm -hmm. um, all they live in most of those communities is grinding and horrendous poverty, large craters and environmental issues, and a, a huge dose of crime in every sense of the word. So we have, we have taken note of that as a government. I mean, as per manifesto, we noted that the country has not benefited from mining from mining over the years. So under a new direction administration, we have start initiated very concrete steps already. I mean, this, we are talking about addressing the rain and rot of about, about 57 years before we came in. So it's going to take a very scrupulous and diligent approach to be able to resolve them. We have commissioned an airborne geophysical survey, right, um, to enable us as government and as citizens to understand what minerals we have in the country, in what quantities, where they are, with almost near razor edge precision. Once you get that as a country, it puts you in the driving seat to negotiate concessions, to negotiate um, um, terms and conditions for the exploitation of your, your natural resources. Before now, um, every kind of investor comes in, even fly by nighters, they spend 10 years doing what they call exploration. In the process, you have no idea what they take away. Mm -hmm. So we want, to get, we want to use science, data, and analytics to resolve that bit of the problem. And I'm pleased to know that that, is, that, that, that study is, is, being, is completed. The data is now being analyzed. It's Putin, for the very first time, Sierra Leone in charge all right, of our mineral resources. We can now negotiate from a position of strength. So again, 60 years on, that's a success registered for the very first time. Right? Um, so, my dear Dr. Taki made a very significant point. Um, politicians, professionals, all travel abroad. Mm. Hardly do we replicate the progress we see there. Well, you know, um, politicians, the problem is like um, an elephant. Right? You, you mm. remember those nine blind men who went to see? Mm. So, yes, um, <laughs> we see these problems. Um, and attempts are being made to solve them. But it's gigantic. It's huge, right? So that you cannot address a 60, 57 year rot in one fell soup. So attempts are being made. But again, it's a plague on all our houses. You have a university, and I'm, I'm saying this because I'm a proud product of the University of Sierra Leone, back then from the college. I mean, very recently, you have a university that will conduct exams and call, and call up matriculation ceremonies. They have not completed marking grades. They do not have scripts. They do not. I mean, that is the biggest disservice you can do to our educational sector. 
we still continue to give, give degrees, award degrees, with no bearing to what obtains in the labor market. This is very, very, very sad. We travel all of us abroad, we go to universities, sometimes we spend time there either as, as fellows, as what have you. In those places, they lecture using whiteboards and more sophisticated ways. <laughs> we come here a steel chalk and duster, right? I mean, even during COVID, we got so challenged, literally cut pants down. That is a shame. The university has to do the role for which they were set up to contribute to serving society, to contribute to solving societal problems. I talk about it, I'm angry. Just the same way Sierra Leoneans are angry with politicians, because that is where I come from. All of us here are proud alumni of Rabbi College, you, myself, all oh, most the of exception us. Here. Of me. Exception <laughs> of me. Yeah. So, so it's good we, we, we say these things so that we understand. Yeah. Um, I have had I've had issues around um, tenured professionals being being be, be terminated mm -hmm. when the new government came to power. Well, you know they have not. You don't know. This is like um, the elephant I just mentioned. You only know part of it. You only touch the bit you wanted to touch. When they call you tenured professional, that word professional, the pre-modification professional presupposes there are professional codes of conduct you should abide by. You, don't, you are not expected to be loud hailers in politics. You are not expected to wear campaign t-shirts and go take campaign positions. When you do that, you have become one of us. Right? This is what a whole lot of these guys who had their contracts terminated did. No civil servant has been sacked, and I challenge any Israel union to bring that forward, except for crimes, convictions, and other things. Right? And besides, when new governments come to power, uh, even the U.S., a new U.S. president comes to power with something like 5,000 new jobs. Right? They are political appointments. So if you were a political appointee at State House, a new government comes, they simply want people who imbibe their own vision, who are able to deliver on their agenda. Nobody has reason to terminate the contract of a tenured professional who is strict so sense a professional, who has not been seen wearing. I have seen some of these guys, quote unquote, professionals say they were terminated. But they, they became pseudo professionals. They became political loud hailers, right? So we're all, we're all out there campaigning, yeah? So on a normal day, when a professional behaves um, to the true tenets of a professional, nobody should touch it. And we have professionals who currently work with, right? We have the MCCU lead, for example, and several other people in this government that have never been touched and may never be touched because they have stayed true to their professional faith. Um? So I also want to talk about um, something which is dear to the hearts of many Sierra Leoneans. Which is? The constitutional review process. Yes. I understand the last administration of former President Kroma impaneled an 80-member constitutional review committee and spent billions on it going across this country to elicit views from Sierra Leoneans um, to input into the 1991 constitution to make it fit for purpose to be able to address the current and emerging challenges facing the country. Sadly enough, the white paper, um, which was the response of the government, literally rejected everything. Um, on a normal day, they could have been asked to, re to, to, to repay those monies that were spent on a jamboree that ended up producing nothing. Well, we are a pro-people government. Um, we are a listening government. We also had a lot of hopes in the constitutional review process. So His Excellency President Bill has taken that on board. A review committee has been constituted. They have completed their they have completed their work, presented it to cabinet, and cabinet has approved the provisions that they have recommended for adoption. In the fullness of time, His Excellency himself will be sharing that good news. But this is a talk and do administration. We recognize. I mean, this country has a huge development deficit in every department of life. That is what we we want to square up to. Mm -hmm. It might not happen. Come fire come. We're not going to solve all the problems today, but we are quite square up to it. We we'll solve them. So do you listen to to you you watch out you watch out for what you hear in coming days. No, I'm glad we are glad because one of the things you need to be doing find the political talk about what we're doing. His Excellency is doing this. They've done this. It's managing the expectations of people. No, at the and top. this is not the problem. At the start, when we came, the the, the after. The elections and this, and I kept saying manage it because I know mm. if there's a rot, it's going to take time. 
I don't envy you people who are there because there's a lot of work to be done. But it has to be seen that some of the work is being done. Mm. And this one, when you talk about university, don't, don't even go there. Because I know for sure, I am part of the university. Oh, okay. And I know review is being done on curricula all the time. And you cannot say, we say we teach you to pass exams. Yeah. Having a first degree is a stepping stone mm -hmm. for what you want to make. Of I've seen graduates right. who cannot touch skills. a computer right. keyboard. Yes, well, that is not a from mouse the university. That's the from university. basic education. But so right. therefore, but we need to understand. No, 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 no. So, but also, go to no, but also you talked about... They mistake a mouse for a rat. You can't <laughs> touch a computer <laughs> That is a serious crisis. But also, you're saying that we're using blackboards. Yes, it shouldn't be. But um, it's also, it's a catch-22. And, and I'm sure you're aware of that. If the university is fully resourced to be able to do things and manage Black themselves... Black boss don't well, require breaking do. a bank. You know no, that. No, they you don't. know they don't All require right. breaking a bank. <laughs> right. so that is why not, the I university is heavily subvented. No, no, the university is heavily subvented. You know that. Time, so we are talking, we are saying, and let us now begin to rationalize the use, of this, the, the use of the college fees. You know, in the recent hard talk, the university had... Yeah, don't SLS forget that the same fees the were students should pay. Uh, 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 then they don't pay, and then you say, don't take exams. They say, well, let them take exams, and then... They, and so it's a catch-22. All right, it's the university. Because the okay. money does not come to staff. Uh, no, 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 no I'm not gone. talking staff. I said the so, university. So, that's what I'm saying. Not so staff. for all the government, you, the, you will see a different dimension in the private in, in, in university. I know so. I because know so. they have the autonomy to do things, they raise their fees, they do what they want to do. The problem and is with the private the public, sector mindset yes, injected, right? but the right problem there. is with the public institution. Do, 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 does that, do the three universities have the free hand to do things and the resources that they want well, to so, do? Well, so, 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 there is good, there is good there news here. There is good news here. Since the, 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 the commencement, this is the, we started university education in this country, mm -hmm. this is the only president who says, look, I want the real university to run professionally. Exactly. I am going to cease being chancellor of the university. One of the main reasons he did not attend any of the graduation convocation ceremonies this year, this year yes. there has been a delay in an act in, in, in doing that review. Yes. But he is convinced that when politics and the uni and university education mix, it's a mix there match. are challenges. So he says, look, I'm going to recluse myself and any future president coming in so that we leave the university to recruit its own staff. Um, develop manage its own our curriculum, fears and manage it, and attract yeah. research and yes. all that. And then you hold yeah. them accountable. Uh, so yeah. this is what yes. the and then you hold them accountable. <laughs> Quick, quickly, you can come in before. But the university messages. itself has to be progressive. <laughs> the university <laughs> leadership <laughs> has to move has like to the rest be. of the world. And I don't see a lot of that. I don't see a lot of appetite for that <laughs> right no, now. It's for me. Come in, Andrew. Not a lot of appetite. All right. Let's Andrew have his bite. Andrew, come in. So what you're talking about university is just a symptom of a problem. And I think we are here. We are here to 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 look at the broader architecture right and to save see the way and, 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 the way. Just impassive. and you know somewhere somewhere passive. somewhere you know it's me one you do i want to call political parties then i and ask them six years back if you get any regrets because there is a there is a tendency for us to spin our way through mm -hmm. but it, i think this is a time for us to have an honest reflection you know if i follow the talk then here because at the end of the day when political parties go back to their offices, it's about how do they lay siege. Mm. So the next 10 years will be a new disaster. Mm -hmm. So it's fine. I think the media, you have a big role to play. Um, so you call APC, you call SLPP. Is there anything that you can do differently now? What is your promise to Sierra Leone after 60 years? What is your promise? So I, I think you saw, uh, um, w when uh, the minister was talking about um, you know, about mining. It's, it's quite good. It's quite good that the geophysical survey has been done. And the mining policies are And, and the mining policies are To so ensure greater beneficiation to mining communities and the country. Let, let me finish. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, quickly. That was, is it, no worries. Let me finish. So, so the, the question is, the question is, even, even for us civil society and the media, mm -hmm. we keep shouting, no, there is corruption, there is this, I have never seen, I have never seen a politician resign job, say because there has been a publication about me on corruption, right. or the people have shouted that I stole monies. So I think we actually need to change strategy. And this comes to the question of mining and minerals. We do know that having data on mining is not sufficient for Sierra Leone to get the full benefits of mining. And what I said in my foundational 
comment was that we have a situation where the Queen said, we don't own what we have. Mm -hmm. So first and foremost is how do we change the conversation? How do we make sure that the people in those communities, how can I come from Kono and I'm not wealthy? I mean, nobody can explain that around the world. How can you come from Kono and you are not wealthy? And you know, when you look at poverty figures, Moyamba, where I come from, we are 71% poor. Tsonkolili is 74% poor. Mining communities are the poorest. How is that possible? So to me, I mean, the, 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 the analysis is fine, but we actually need to, as Fatou said, let's think Sierra Leone. So why can't I have a stake in mining? Imagine if people said, I mean, if the where Jala University is from, they have Mokonde there. If 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 the people of Mokonde had a stake in Jala University, instead of just giving them the land, they will never tolerate any demonstration going to go near that campus. So why how how are Sierra Leoneans having a share in the economy? So if you, right now if we're going to divide our wealth between us and non Sierra Leoneans, they are way wealthier than we are. And the thing that we have perfected over time is how do we fight? How do we fight? So to me, I think what we are discussing is more of the symptom. The big disease is how do we, do we sit down? And you know, there is, there is something that is being instrumentalized, which is ethnicity. Ethnicity, people know that if I say, you know, it's in them and they, they hate me, oh, they hate winner. They, I will get sympathy for that group because that group will feel that I am pr protecting them. Right? Mm -hmm. it, 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 it's pathetic. So they are instrumentalizing. And, you know, Jimmy Kande wrote an interesting work, The Instrumentalization of Ethnicity. It's been instrumentalized. Sierra Leoneans, we are so peaceful. We all the talk real. This needs to be a country that is an example of inclusion. You know, Seven million people. Seven million people. <laughs> in, in the Garden of and you know what? We just we, we, we're working on a documentary. We just we just came from across the country and a lot of people are saying I went to, to, to Limba country. We civil society. I mean IGL. Oh. So, <laughs> so, so we went we went to this Limba country. Limba, you know, we went to this place uh Bumban where there was this archaeology that the Limbas were there for about the eighth century under the the hill. And the people were saying, you know what? We have nothing against Mendes. In fact, a number of my uncles are there. They are in, they, they have built houses there. They say, come see, come and visit us. In fact, politicians don't care about us. They only come around. Election time. When there's election time. In fact, after election, they say, they can't write with name. And then we went to Mwamba, and this man was saying, you know, this division is created so that we hate one another, so we, that, we can't question them. So I think it's free time that is the problem. Not that people don't know. They know I, the easiest thing. Right now, it's difficult for APC to say, I don't have a northern strategy anymore. It's difficult for SLPP to say, I don't have a southeastern strategy anymore. How do we need to push political parties to move from one region strategy to a national strategy? Mm -hmm. Is the PR system sufficient? I think that should be the, the bigger debate. But I think, to me, fundamental in all of this mm -hmm. is how do we get political parties to do their own reflection. So let's, let's let, let them go to their offices, to right. their party offices. Do reflection. Where are you going wrong? Up to this moment, we have Anes Kuruma. He's the chair of APC. It's, it's the APC then is not different from what it is now. The SLPP then, is it, it's, if by 2023, is it going to be any different? So I think while we are doing reflection openly, we actually need internal reflection on the party mechanics. Right. Because what, we, what has become of Sierra Leone is political parties stamping their character of the country, uh, their character on the country. Mm -hmm. So they say, there, there, is what we call, uh, uh, there is what we call in development science, you know, dependency path, dependency path. So like what you are today, is contingent of what has happened bef before you. So what is going to happen next year is going to be contingent of what is going to happen this week and next week. All right. So Let you, you have a big role to play in seeing how do we shape that. Okay. So the political parties have to have a reason. They need to acknowledge 
that something needs to change. Yes. <laughs> because if they're doing the same thing over and over, they obviously feel they're doing the right thing. Yes. Right. But the country is not That's moving forward. So there has to be an acknowledgement. Right. Let me quickly quickly run few um, through a few messages. Beatrice Henry say, is saying, we're clueless of where Sierra Leone is going. Um, Alfonso Grant greets anger and violence can never build a nation. Mohamed Jane is saying, there's no reason to celebrate but to reflect and make amends for what we have lost. Um, Amanatsu Sanusi saying, happy independence to all my people in the house and all over. May Allah guide our country to the right path. I mean, and, um, I'm, going to, I'm going to skip all those political things. Students said enough is enough. Um, okay, Ali, I'm not going to go through that. Umaru Bori saying, those um, nope. <laughs> uh, it, it, the messages are... Um, thank you very much, Faith Mustafa. We should discuss, um, I mean, the issues. Let's not attack personality. Let's, let, let's create a, uh, a civilized platform. Um, if there is, uh, <laughs> yes, <laughs> so, yeah, definitely. It has to be elevated. So there's always this comparison between APC and SLPP, people accusing. So I, I, well, I actually have to say something as I skip through. <laughs> For 11 years, um, we have, um, okay, we're not cursing our leaders. Um, when talking about Sierra Leone, it takes um, time to be able to bring out the good things we have achieved because the bad um, outweighs um, the good, Joseph Koka is saying. Um, they impose, um, okay, that's too ash. From 1961 till date, amongst them, these oldest parties, as a PP and APC, which one has ruled the most? Let's be honest, Eddie Grant is asking. Um, the, prom the problems in Sierra Leone should be placed on, um, on a particular tribe again, and you want me to call that? I won't. <laughs> Interestingly. Um, I might, <laughs> I know, if a political party does not have its foundation in its determination to advance a cause that is right and that is moral, then it is not a political party. It is merely a conspiracy to seize power. Yusuf Fofana is um, saying, um, thank you, Faith. And I'm, I think I'm going to actually, um, Umau, um, I'm going to get our IT guy. Unfortunately, we are going to um, get you out of this platform. Um, you have to kill the issue of tribalism. We cannot um, create a platform to feel that, yeah? Um, I'm trying, I'm trying, yeah, I'm trying. Saying. Young man. <laughs> 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 Threats and insults shouldn't stop us from speaking the truth because in the words of Martin Luther King Jr., in the end, we will remember not the words of our enemies but the silence of our friends. Um, Bobo Labo, interesting. The former, mm, okay, I have to hold the messages there, I'm sorry. Um, well, exactly. Dr. Taki is really on point with our presentation by giving solutions to the country. Tijan M. Kaikai is saying, indeed, Fritonians really have the problem and they think Freetown is Sierra Leone, which is not Amara Alpha, um, is saying. Uh, Muhammad is asking me why are they sure picking the text messages I have said it now and my producer is supporting me too so we have to take messages that, um, that, that address the issues and messages that speak to unity and not division please so you have to bear with us yeah? um, institutions need to be developmentally oriented the, um, they should be able to create and innovate in order to move with the global trend. Ahmed Fofana is saying. Um, Samuel asked the minister about um, um, the video trending on social media. Abdul Tijan Kabo, that's not what we're discussing now. Um, the only way Sierra Leone will progress is to stop electing, um, again, two tribes. I'm not going to name them. If we cannot celebrate anything in 60 years. That means, see, from 1961 to now, no leader or ruling party nor do nothing for this country, so we for blame them all. Tambabi is saying, um, Samuel, please let the minister know that we're not moving to the right directions, mark my words. Um, you've said it now, I only have read your words. Samuel Sierra Leone was the head 
and center for all British West African countries. Sierra Leone became the first country in the world, um, in the whole of Sub-Saharan Africa, to have a railway in, 19, in 1898, first to have electricity in 1927. Um, but who said in there now? We don't have time to go into that. <laughs> Sanko Ali is saying, thanks very much, madam. I like your speech. Um, this is, I like your speech tonight. Our politicians in Sierra Leone, since the time we gain independence, nothing to show that this is what um, they've done, which will show a better example to the country, like good education, good medical facility, etc. All these necessary things um, that help a country to grow fast and zero, zero in the country. So how can we be able to produce? Papa Salon, please, let's try to improve on one section <laughs> in the country, especially education system, because uh, it's the mother of things in the world. Osman Kamarai say, was there a need for airborne digital um, geophysical survey when there had been a documentation of our natural resources? Sierra Leone is sent down with an um, escapement of um, uh, minerals. FBC um, did it years ago. Value for money, I question. Let things Sierra Leone, not parties, and uh, bring innovation to everything you do. Then we can transform the country. Ahmad Zidane Ba, uh, Andrew Lavalli, um, Samuel Melvin Jones, I'm not going to read that. Um, Abdullah Ibra is saying, why celebrate when we still depend on others? So Salon is yet a donor nation, despite the abundance of natural resources. We need a proper talk in Korea once a month. Loving Dr. Fatou, she knows how to mix it up. Benjamin Akipama. I know uh, already he will be in my, in my, in my DM too, to tell me that. <laughs> um, YMSC says, in 60 years, nothing to write home about. The new direction um, is not helping. For now, they are given free education. Are they also providing jobs? David Moy would just so fun. I saying, Congratulations to Sierra Leone for reaching retirement age and achieving nothing. Alusan Conte is saying, Samuel, let the minister answer the question of Dr. Taki about why those in power move elsewhere for health issues. Tijan M. Kai Kai. <laughs> Um, three more messages, three more messages. I totally agree with you, Mr. Andrew Lavalli. My solution is to uh, minimize tribalism. Um, let's um, have all North, West, and South Eastern candidates for all political parties in a single election. Um, we are not fully independent. We are semi-independent as we still depend on donors. Jibril, Jibril is saying, um, a fool at uh, 40 is a fool for life, but a fool at 60 is what? Um, Abu Sise is saying, I'll have to leave the messages there. We don't have time. Um, we have been dangerously chased. <laughs> so so, so I'm, I'm starting with you, Andrew. Um, now, what, 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 what's the way forward? How do we then move away from all of these challenges that are so mountainous, I mean, in front of us, to, 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 to a path that we would say it, it, we're getting there? So, you know, when things are bad, when many things are down, mm -hmm. let me put it that way, everything becomes a priority. So in that context, it's become very difficult to even prioritize. Right. I think the, the biggest challenge we have, first and foremost, is how do we prioritize. So moving forward to me, is about starting with the fundamentals. That's why to me, my biggest takeaway tonight is how do we get along. If we should have one resolution, mm -hmm. How can we look ourselves in the face and then say, you know, it's in, this is now the only place this way, then give we? Let's handle it well. You know, I remember when, well, I read about it, mm -hmm. when uh, diamonds was discovered in Botswana, and it happened 30 years after Sierra Leone discovered diamonds. The house was just in the 60s. Siresit Kama at the time, he said, this diamond is the only thing we have. Let us handle it with care. Mm. You know, to me, it speaks to the leadership, the rhetoric of leadership, how that can be transformational. So I, I think that's, that's one thing we need to, to, to understand. So it, it, it really starts with the fundamentals. Mm -hmm. So what is going to be the point number one? The point number one is actually working, having a governance architecture that works. If you have... You know, it, 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 there's quite a lot of complaints if, if by just going through those text messages, right. you can actually see the division is already, mm -hmm. you know, people want you to associate, the, to be associated with their point. The moment you disagree, you get a barrage of, 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 of abuses. Mm -hmm. So, and we, we have lived in a situation where, if, if, it, if you just flash back 
like in the 60s and 70s, where you, you, you know, you cannot say anything without having a knock on your door mm -hmm. at, at night. And f that's why, in fact, I was saying it's even good for us to celebrate because what we are now doing 30 years ago, you can't do it in Sierra Leone. It's good for us to have that reflection. But moving forward, mm -hmm. we have to address the binding constraint. The binding constraint is poverty and inclusive governance. We cannot talk about inclusive governance when the structures for participation are not in themselves inclusive. So I'm happy and I'm really heartened that the minister is talking about how do we get the structure inclusive. So, so we, 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 we have to, to think about reducing you know, uh, toxic, to toxic battles. Mm -hmm. the, so you, and then the moment you do that, you can have a policing that works. Right now, you know, when you compare policing in Sierra Leone and policing in elsewhere, like in developed countries, for developed countries, policing is how you are giving the button when you, you arrest the minister, when you actually do that. But here, it's, you cannot even try it. So, it it's, so, so you can see law and order becoming a resource for control and not a service of government. There are two fundamental services of government, law and order, justice and security. So that cannot be outsourced to anyone. Mm. So how that is being given to everyone. All of this cry that we cry every day, a lot of people are saying, under this system, I get justice. Under that system, I don't get justice. Mm -hmm. Under this system, I'm secured. Under that system, I'm not secured. When you looked at the Afrobarometer, we compared Afrobarometer 2015 results and mm -hmm. 2020 results. We just took justice, and we compared McKinney and Kenima. Their comments on justice. It, it, we, you just flipped the, you just flipped it. Mm -hmm. So how do you, so how do we have a, a country where we all feel safe? I know it's difficult. It's easier said than done when we sit in the comfort of our chairs, mm -hmm. because a lot of people are saying, no, these people, um, they, they they just want to remove me from from office. But mm -hmm. as Fatu said, when you deliver the basics, when you deliver results you'll be assured of your power. Right. But normally, we've, re we've reached a point where a lot of politicians are afraid. If I try that, am I secured? Mm. Or if I try that, is my, will my opponents reciprocate the same way? So you, we have a situation where the biggest, you know, the biggest fear of SLPP is SLPP itself, and the biggest fear of APC is APC itself. So the SLPP itself, they can say, you know, we don't want to be there in power, not to sue them, but they do. Now you want to come make book. And then you erode your power base. <laughs> so they are afraid to say, how can I form an inclusive government and still remain in power? So I think one, one of the things we've not tried mm, is quickly. inclusion. So how do, we, how do we ensure we overcome fear? What we do at IGR is really to understand people in the driving seat of policy, how do they feel? What are their pressures? And it's only when you do that analysis then you can be in position to advise. As if you do this, because politicians want two things. Hmm? They want to maintain power or to gain power. And in some cases, they need wealth. Well, in, in, in many African countries, <laughs> just to be sinister. <laughs> so, the, but, so the question is, how do you from a political economy point of view, how do you advise from the point of view? Say, if you do this, you will actually maintain power. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so, so that becomes a point of advice. But I, I think the second point to Quickly. me is yeah. it's really on the economy. We, that's really my two takeaways. Mm -hmm. it's, it's really bringing down the economy down to the, to the average Soviet Union. If there are quite a number of policies that I saw Minister J.J. Safa re reading the budget speech last in 2019, and he, re he read something really pointed. He said for every procurement that is above 500 million, that procurement has to be done at the district level. That was a powerful statement to say, you in Bombali, 
do not allow someone from Freetown to go do your procurement. Mm -hmm. But when I saw the procurement report for 2017-2018, 94% of all procurements in Sierra Leone are done here. How do we diversify the economy? How do we make sure Sierra Leoneans take hold of the economy? Because, you know, we went to Rutile and these young people were saying, we, if we get work no more, all this bitterness go down. Mm. That, if you go to McKinney, that's the same thing. Young people, we say they are riotous, they are bitter because they are idle. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, I think I, I agree with what uh, Mr. Lavalin uh, mm -hmm. just mentioned. Um, one of the, the fundamental problems, one, one of the fundamental problems we've been having in Sierra Leone is mm -hmm. the fact that we've not been able to make use of our youthful resource. Okay. Um, China, they made use of that demographic dividend. I'll call it a demographic dividend. If, you, if your population is young, mm -hmm. it means you can be able to use that to your advantage to also help your economic drive. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and, and importantly, as we're talking about the kind of Sierra Leone we want, we want a prosperous Sierra Leone. Mm -hmm. And that's where the economy com comes in. This country is not poor. It's not. It's a loan to a poor country. Mm -hmm. the, the only thing, Sierra Leone, don't, we are poorly managed. By the one day we, they manage we, when I, we call we leaders them. Mm -hmm. So we, we, we have to be very truthful. We have to be purposeful. We have to be deliberate. And one of the things which we have seen from our own side, Sierra Leone, we want is like, we, 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 in Sierra Leone, we take too much time on rhetorics, beautiful rhetorics. And when I looked at the last, the documents of our successive government, we have a very lovely document, Agenda for Prosperity, another document called New Direction. But those are sweet paradoxes, OK? Uh, wh what they preach and what they do is completely different. And I if we're moving forward, we need integrity in leadership. Integrity in leadership is very crucial for the new Sierra we want. Mm -hmm. One of the things which we've, we've lost as a country for quite a very long time is integrity in leadership. The Constitution says this. The text is there. But when the person comes who leads, he does not go by the text. And even when he makes pronouncements, when he is not put under duress, he cannot keep up with the commitments he makes. Mm -hmm. So that's, for me, I believe we need to change that. Going forward, let us breathe more integrity in leadership. And don't say something you cannot do. And it's not just about doing it anyway, anyhow. Because what we've seen is that just like we, 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 to very like we rushed into independence, we rush into saying things that we do not think through. We, we, we take, our thoughts are shallow. We don't think five years' time. We don't even think about the resources we'd have to garner to support our project. And, and, and this breeds frustration. When you go to people, you tell them, say, me, now this I can do for you now. You know, people don't force you to say, can't tell me, do I do this for we? Mm -hmm. And I think that's the most frustrating part. You came on your volition. You saw the problems, and you said, I have been able to assess. I don't look the problem. I don't assess. They were also not fine. They must have been handler. So me, they come now, I can handle them. But when people come again, they begin to give excuses. So one of the things we, we don't want going forward, we don't want excuses. We need to send excuses to Guantanamo Bay. Sierra Leone needs, we need to be responsible, mm -hmm. all of us. I mean, the young man, the ghetto man in the street, the politician should not be making excuses. We don't have to go back to what happened 10 or 11 years time from now. And in the same way we want, we believe we all have to take responsibility. As a young man, I, we always ask ourselves, what are we doing? And this is where we would have to also um, speak about this. One of our recommendations that we believe we, we, we need to focus on as, as a nation is we don't have to scramble around if you just touch something here, don't do it perfectly, you jump to something else. One of the things which has helped develop nations in the West is their focus, is the, the, the value of focus. I tell you, when you focus on certain things, you do them well, you get them to a logical conclusion. Here we don't get that laser focus. We do something here, play to the gallery, we jump and then go to some other place, go to a um, bridge building, go to fix education, fix that, what are we really focusing on? And we are always trying to play to the gallery for quite a very long time. Successive government. Waiting will make the one for vote quick. It's not about waiting will be sustainable. Waiting will make when they see them, they will wash for vote. 
And we have to change that going forward. Mm. So um, we need to have very honest conversations. And like we're having, the bread and butter issue, a crucial. Today, young man, then go, then they grab, then say, but, but me ten grand now say for life for get soba food in the morning, no problem. Mm. So the politician has promised that when he comes, he's going to fix that. And he lives up, he continues to have trust in that. So what the politicians should be thinking now in the Sierra we want is to live up to those commitments they have made. And mm. there will be no room for excuses. Right. We would also um, suggest, um, like I was saying, in yeah, recommending, mm -hmm. in focusing on critical areas. I believe food is a loud political statement. A father that cannot feed his home is not really fit to be called a father. A nation that cannot feed its people is a nation that is sick and should be taken to somewhere else. So the, the president spoke about agriculture. Mm. Those were nice rhetorics. Okay, for the very first time, there, there, was, um, th there was some amount of <coughs> commitment to also ginger ministers. When you go to Nigeria, you see people who are even educated, they take pride in, in farming. They take pride in ensuring that they, they fight to, to, be food self, self, to be food sufficient. What are we doing here? We've talked a lot about mining as the resource. I tell you, Sierra Leone is blessed with arable lands. That is a very good resource, mm -hmm. which we can also help the nation in its, economy, in its economic drive to ensure that it services the people of the nation. Agriculture is helping other nations, 50% of the GDP, to ensure that you know, they are able to take care of the people. We have arable lands all over the country. What are we doing as a nation? So for, for, for the Sierra Leone we want, we believe one of the recommendations we don't want to come up with, because we have now youthful population, they have the strength, there are many young men in Sierra Leone, how can we also train them? In our drive, let's say 10 years from now, when we come here 70 years, mm -hmm. 70 years from now, let us, we don't address agriculture force. Or let's say at least people in Wadeen Dina village, they're not they buy imported rice again. Mm -hmm. so little by little, we are, also, we are trying to like be independent okay so we are not depending on you know the west also um, and help us out all right thank you and, and the issue on agriculture it's it's something we have to craft a conversation around because there's a, there's a report that says the next set of billionaires would have to come from that from sector the agriculture so maybe we should be thinking of leaving this job and, and, and so we should be leaving <laughs> <laughs> yeah dr taki sweet no, rhetorics all right definitely dr taki so this is the problem uh -uh. <laughs> So, yes. so, so um, for me, I think um, moving forward, like I say, it's a good um, start for mm -hmm. us to have this conversation. It has to be a honest. Um, right. Somebody not think say we can't sit down here. One criticize people. Right. If you're a leader, mm -hmm. you need to take it. Let me can say you're like banana. Right. Who then plants banana? Mm -hmm. So you need to. That comes with it. Yeah. So there has to be inclusivity. I think say and we don't talk around the and and for so. No, nothing. Say, make the country. Nobody needs to be left behind. So mm -hmm. that we take ownership. Okay, there has to be sincerity. Now, the only way we can peg the sincerity is that His Excellency has to be able to see and to hear when people they complain about certain things. Where is there's a problem area? Mm -hmm. So it's not waiting for person for can tell, and we might want to tell him what they think he wants to hear. Then maybe he can keep his ears to the ground. And get people and we go honest enough for telling us, now this line they're happy, no, mm -hmm. not waiting that they can't tell you. Because most times we have that. It right. comes natural to us. It, we, we seem to have that. Um, we need to also have um, regard for rule of law. When we make the law, we will make the law, more make sure say back, we say go with the law. Mm -hmm. Make we not make the law, we they catch other people and they will just say, waiting we say for be, we they do the opposite. Yeah? So that's another way of paving that way towards beyond 60, mm. towards 61, okay? Um, also, we have to be seen, our justice system has to be seen to be fair. Like I don't talk about inclusivity. May people feel, again, it's that ownership for people for things say they're part of it. Mm. May not think say, now some people lay inside, some of we left out. Why would they talk about farming? I am thinking that, um, why is it that we don't have state farms? Or do we have? I'm if we do have, have. <laughs> no, but we get land upline. Right. We have land. We have land. God mm -hmm. has given us we that. 
We get. Yes. So why is it that we don't have when sometimes even a correctional services we can put some if you have lots of people who are moving around looking for work. So if they go there they want why is they doing why is it they have they having they're having food, then they get money. So again, it's better easier said than <laughs> done. The people you are talking about, eh? Eh? you have no, no idea. Eh, in Anika say <laughs> this is where we're having this honest conversation. You know, this is where again how, how that's how radical. Mm -hmm. Radical. <laughs> radical radical shift mm -hmm. has to be done because at the end rado after your government goes when it goes you're going to have blame again like how they talk now say 60 years we're not the only set of people we seem to and I, I, for me when we get sense i can easily say during the time for mprc we were at college at the time mm -hmm. and there were certain things that they did Usai discipline Usai, even though they they manhandled people them but when they make certain law, then people they go with them, they go, oh, now so demand them. You understand? So there's certain things that have, and this is where that radicalness comes in. Mm -hmm. The free tongue, we're very free in the free tongue. And we're not taking heed of what needs to be done. And we're not taking responsibility. Mm -hmm. But as soon as we leave the shores of free tongue, even if we course go Liberia, yep. we they go to with within Liberia, Absolutely. lossy. Right. We they go with Guinea law. But as we can, it change. So that has to change, but that has to come from that leadership too. So for me, um, you, you three years in this government, mm. and like I say, I don't envy you. Definitely. It's three years, and we have elections coming. Right. So this is not the rhetoric time anymore. We don't pass that term of what in the manifesto we see and what we see. This is the time, and luckily, your government is in power. So when you do things and you take certain t steps, when you see amenities being done, when you see people not complain and grumble again because. They, they have something, if not a light, we get free space. There's space for children to play. Mm. We have parks. We have, we're, we're making provisions. You know what I mean? Mm. This basic amenities, light, water, food. Yeah? You don't even need to campaign. Right. You know, we'll get that with you. So, for me, I think at this stage, as we celebrate, and I think we need to celebrate, okay. because we need to look at where we have come from. We cannot be negative. We need to look at where we have come from. We need to look at all, me always say Sierra Leoneans, resilient Sierra Leoneans, if you open club seven days a week, Sierra Leoneans are the day at that club seven days a week. <laughs> if you open dance dance seven days a week, they day. Right. Once people and they enjoy themselves, once basic things and day. Well, okay. So I think that this is where this government draws the line and then you act. Just start building your blocks. Mm -hmm. Do specific things. That's like if you, if you have over 30% of women in governance, <laughs> believe me, you don't even need to campaign to women. <laughs> women, they can't vote for now. Uh -huh. Because they've shown it. You have shown what you have said. So this is just an example. Yep, yep. So if that man not it, they will not think, say, better day for him. Mm -hmm. Opportunity, they say, go farm Vianda or go do this. Then you don't, by come election time, you don't even need it. All right. So for me, this is where we, we, we go. And una, na una day opportunity now for build the blocks for 61, 62, 63. Right. And make we see, say, we may say, ah, by 60 years, we may complain, say, better than what you know, been there. Mm -hmm. But from 61, we begin to see something, and because then people are building the blocks for making Mr. It Minister. So all things they now on a court. Yeah. So, Samuel, <laughs> I used to come here uh, <laughs> during the campaign days. Right. Uh, I was not as gray and silver <laughs> as I am now. Um, so if I say this, you will wonder what uh, President Bill will look like now in the Vice President. It's not easy. You know, so it's a very difficult place to be, but it's equally an honor. Uh, but like he always says, it was we who campaigned to lead. We are there, we have to deliver, no excuses. However, uh, slavery ended about a hundred, how many hundred years ago? We still reference it. So, you know, like Walisha Inca will typically say, if you can't remember where the rain began to beat you, you can't tell where you dried your body. But in spite of all that, we still believe that poverty and freedom is better than riches and slavery. I mean, that's an old aphorism. I mean, it's debatable, but let's have that as, <laughs> as, 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 as a start. You know, so we have said very interesting things, and I still want to posit that we may not have gotten to where we want to be, but there have been fundamental changes. So, like Fatu noted, we must celebrate. I will only say we need to commemorate April 27, right? For very obvious reasons. 
um, you have a president in our 60-year journey who is being the only president to open himself up to public scrutiny. Yes, all of us around the table here have <laughs> seen more than one, two mm. presidents. Mm. President Bill is the only president who has opened himself up to public scrutiny. He goes to the radio stations. He, open, he goes to a town hall debate. Every manner of question is asked of him, and he answers them. This is because he clearly wants to feel the temperature of the men and women he sought to lead. Right? So, we were in Karina District. By the way, he has visited um, the northern province more than he has officially visited the southern east. Yes. Um, during, one of, during the last visit to Karina District, we went to Batcano, which was headquarters for Karina in the colonial time. They said for the last 25 years, they have not seen a sitting president visit. President Bill um, ended their drought of presidential visits. And you must have heard, went to Rokoland and other communities that have never seen president, not even during election time. What that means is that you have a president who clearly wants to feel the unfettered heartbeat of his people, to understand the current challenges they are facing, so that that could go to inform policy actions, right. right? So why am I stressing this? A lot of changes have happened. A lot of changes are in the offing, and this is no one off. Let me share this story as part of, you know. Um, so in my current role, um, I am advised on when um, the deploy towers, wherever, mobile network towers. So I am told by one of the operators that they went to a community to commission a tower. And an old man said to them, you know, you know the team that went before the commissioning? In the conversation, the old man told him, one of the guys said, look, he asked of Pasheki. Say, Pasheki, this was last year. Say, Pasheki must be an old man now. It's a long time he's, you know, he's not come here. I mean, so what this means <laughs> is this country has suffered Serial neglect over the years. In this day and age, um, how many years after um, former President Stevens passed, somebody was asking last year. Tells you they, are they are removed. They are removed. So President Bio has brought them part of the digital highway. They now have a cell tower. They could talk to themselves. They could talk to their families, their kids abroad. But this was very serious. When somebody shared, yeah, when they shared that with me, I literally wept. Hmm. No community deserves that kind of deprivation. Okay, so um, we also want to talk about um, this situation that has to do with, oh, you know, I've, I'm script, I've been scripting myself <laughs> so that I don't need yeah. You have a minute. No, 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 let me have it. <laughs> so we're talking about young people, mm -hmm. you know. So this is where we have to act. Governments have come and gone. It's been all motion, no movement. It's been all lip service. And you know, like Mr. Moore Conte mentioned, the demographic dividend, this is where we should fare better than many other countries around the world. We have an, you know, a largely youthful demographic. So we have to invest in that generation. That has not eluded us. His Excellency President Bill is aware that Many missed out on the opportunities of schooling. They are now grown-ups. They want to start families. Some have started families. They need to provide for their families. If society's firebrick should be held together. So what have we done? We have commissioned a $21 million um, skills development fund. I was in McKinney two weeks ago on a very unrelated matter, and I went to Youth Build. Yeah? Communities around the country have benefited from these funds to, to train you know, that generation of young people in technical vocational skills and training. Because with technical vocational skills and training education, you don't necessarily have to pick up a formal 8 to 5 job. You can employ yourself and even become a blessing and an employer of other young people. So President Bill's heart is in the right place. We, that money is not enough. But this is a demonstration that we clearly know that's a problem and we need to have it. Right. It still gives us, we remember the 11-year-old civil war, and on all sides of the divide, you had young people failing it. They were both perpetrators and victims. So we clearly understand that. That is why we don't want to leave them behind. 
We want to give them a source of secure livelihood. We want to give them something to have to enhance their stake in society. On agriculture, you know, when we campaign back then, again, this is not rhetoric. I'm merely drawing attention to the things that people ought to know. But like we say, because we sit um, in a remote theater in the comfort of our homes, we don't know some of the things that happen. So again, for the same young people, sir, um, we have um, commissioned chief on youth farms and given them tractors and ancillary equipment so that they could farm for themselves. And the youth in those communities are happy. I was in McKinney last week at a public forum. The youth council chairperson for McKinney said they are very excited by that opportunity. They are now able to bring a lot of young people to their communities to contribute to grow what they eat and eat what they grow. The Paramount Chiefs also said same, you know. So that is interesting. This is simply because government has embarked on a paradigm shift. Okay. We have embarked on a policy shift. Just, let me just wrap up. Yes, quickly. A policy Please. shift, right? So instead of politicians having tractors that they could put at the back of their houses, I saw one at Fremont College a couple of years ago. A politician who was a minister in the previous administration had one. You know, they used to dry their clothes and other things there. Government officials are not going to have this. The private sector is running that through machine rings. And if you require it, you are giving coupons and they can go till your farm for a small fee, very small affordable fee. Well, government is subsidizing that. This is to ensure that we treat the issue of food security seriously. Like you rightly mentioned, if you cannot feed your family, that undermines your manhood. Mm -hmm. huh? So we want to be able to have at least the importation of food and the, cost, the amount of money we spend on the importation of food. At the moment, I'm told it's, it's hovering around 200 to 250 million dollars every year. So if we are able to save part of that, we could invest it in social welfare, in health, in, 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 in healthcare delivery system, support free quality education, even support young men and women. All right. right. So a lot of things. Thank I know. you very much, uh, Muhammad Rahman Sore, Minister of Information and Communication, and Rula Valley, Executive Director, um, Institute for Governance Reform, Moses Small Conte, Executive Secretary, Selin We Want, Dr. Fatutaki, one of um, one of those who. Um, continue to mold us in the University of Sierra Leone. Thank you very much. She is an academic potter. <laughs> Thank you very much, Dr. Taki. It's a pleasure having you here after a very long time. <laughs> all right, and minister. Congratulations to all of us. Mm. All right. <laughs> yeah. And hey, and congratulations to Andrew. I mean, uh, you are one of those that would be um, recognized. Um, congratulations on your presidential recognition. Thank you. Thank you. I was trying to get a list to scrutinize. I always have the gender lens. Men, women, how many? No, no, Thank this, you. This, this no, year, no, I am well, privileged, I've seen some, I'm some privileged to have their names. Their awards committee. Their names. And I can tell you, yes, their yes. names. We will have yes. a good end. And I can see, <laughs> see Dr. Sissé <laughs> being... Um, yeah, I Dr. saw that on about 500 words. <laughs> I, saw, I saw you have to yes. do a citation of about 500 words. Yes, yes. All right, being, thank being you. Well, that's all we have um, time for in tonight's edition of the program week. Um, not wake up, sell you AYV on Sunday. Many thanks to my panelists, our lovely audience. Um, this show is repeated on Thursday if you missed this edition. Um, a fresh edition comes up next week, same time, same station here on your home of all things credible, factual, and all types of balanced views. Uh, my name is Samuel Weisbango, and up next is our AYV prime time news. Take care of yourself and stay blessed. Yes, subscribe. You always the watch we program them, but you not subscribe yet to the channel. All wait till you get for do, press this red subscribe button, and then you come over here to and press this bell. To the bell option, press this one with all. And don't don't. And no get for cost you anything. When you do this, now sign for show say you the support we for make we do more. Thank you for your help for share this program. Yeah, God bless you.